All right, everybody. So guess what time it is? It is Fantasy Grounds time. It's uh, a little after 9 o'clock. And uh, I'm David, your humbled dungeon master. And we are going to be playing today with uh, four players. We have Doug, we have Chris, James, and John. And we're going to go ahead and let everyone introduce themselves. So, Doug, you want to go ahead and tell everybody who you are? Hello, I'm uh, Doug Davison. I'm the uh, president and one of the owners of Smiteworks, the creators of Fantasy Grounds. I'll be playing Gildan, the High Elf Rogue. All right. Chris, how's it going? Tell everybody who you are. Hey, I am Chris Lindsay. I'm the product <laughs> manager for Dungeons & Dragons at Wizards of the Coast. And I am playing Graven, a dwarf wizard. All right. Good to see you, Chris. James, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm the I'm James Holloway, the production coordinator for Smiteworks, and I'm playing Curlioa Darkspire. Awesome. And last but not least, how about John? Who are you, John? Hi, I'm John Gregory. I'm one of the lead developers on Fantasy Grounds, and I am playing Atticus Thon, a human cleric. All right. Well, it's good to see everybody, and thanks for playing tonight. So we uh. We are continuing on with part three of the DDEX 3-5 uh, Chains of Kythen series uh, for Adventure League. And this is uh, Mission 3 tonight. And as I, I emailed all of you guys as well earlier, and we'll be starting the, the DDAL05 series next week. So we'll be, we'll be uh, jumping right into the Storm King's Thunder stuff. So we'll... Uh, you guys should be able to use uh, use your characters. We, we, we won't have too much of a problem because of the, the level ranges will be 1 to 4 for that uh, story series, which is a good thing. So, all right. We're going to continue on with part 3 of Chains of Kython. And uh, where we left off last time, usually I'll, I asked about, you know, downtime days and whatnot, but you guys were pretty much in the middle of a huge investigation and we're going to pick up at the where we uh, where we left off, where you guys were with the guards and also the uh, the owner of the the winking tavern and also the uh, uh, the victim's husband as well, uh, which is uh, Zor Falton Goss and the owner of the pub, well the owner of the Wink and Wave Tavern is Erden Brisnick. So I'm going to let you guys do a, a recap of the session last time, and then we will continue on. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Um, so basically, um, what we did is we we spoke with with um, a few people that led us to um, identify that we wanted to speak very very much with Andrick Goss, who is the uh, nephew, I believe, of the Gosses, and he was the one uh, responsible for painting the the painting, which seemed to have a, a pretty profound effect on at least one person. Um, Kata, who had thrown her her drink and uh, lit her her fellow noble on fire, and so uh, we followed some leads. We went back to his house, his apartment. It was abandoned. Um, managed to somehow avoid a conflict, and uh, and then from there we uh, followed additional leads. We went back to the uh, Red Wizards uh, embassy, and which was one of the leads. Um, I guess before that we talked with uh, at the gallery, went to the gallery first, and we did speak with uh, the lady at the gallery. I'm trying to remember what her name was. Um, Jarena Plum. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow, so we we G. he's coming on, boy. Yeah. Good yes. job. Good job. Uh, and so she had a huge like just whole gallery um, set up, all of Andrick's paintings, all of which had a really strong fire motif. And uh, led to one big kind of huge inferno, um, which um, you know was quite impressive to see. But you know, given given the effects of the small painting, were a little bit troubling. Um, so then we started to follow the lead on where some of those paintings had ended up, and that took us to a couple of places. One of which was in the uh, Gent, Zeta, uh, Zent Ghetto which we went down there and there was a warehouse that was supposedly an abandoned warehouse but it had evidently uh, morphed into some form of a 
meeting, gathering, swap shop type place where all sorts of unsavory, unsavory types would get together and, and hawk wares and sell things. And, uh, and on the back of that wall was a giant mural that Andrick had hastily painted as well. And that seemed to be captivating people's attention as well, even within the warehouse. So people that would normally be focused on selling and pushing their wares, you know, kept kind of like glancing back at this painting. So it was, it was having, you know, an effect on more people, even though it didn't appear to radiate magic that we could tell. Um, the other thing is, is from there, we found out that there was a bald headed man that had been traveling with him, which we, uh, somehow linked up that, uh, he was probably a fan. So then we, um, you know, went to the, uh, embassy <laughs> and, uh, nice you know, snort, spoke, <laughs> yeah, we, we spoke with, um, one of our, one of our friends and agents there who was actually a member of the Emerald Enclave. Uh, she mentioned that he was very interested in, you know, pursuing this sort of stuff, but that he wasn't uh, available or wasn't there at the time. And his name, let's see if I can get his name right. John? Yeah. Azik. Azik, yeah. Okay, so Azik, uh, we found out where he lived. Um, Gildan did happen to leave a painting of a torch in, in one of the bathrooms, though. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how that all plays out. I'm, I'm hoping that, that that plays out somehow. But uh, if the if the embassy the embassy burns down somehow, then you know I'll, I'll take partial credit for that. Uh, so then we went to Azik's house. We went in, uh, introduced ourselves to uh, to him. Found out that his neighbors didn't much care for him, probably because he's a Than and uh, he's probably into some necromancy and other kind of you know nefarious things, you know, typical Than sort of stuff. And so uh, he invited us in. John proceeded to charm him, <laughs> and uh, he did. Yeah, with, with the staff. Yeah, he didn't resist. He didn't resist. You know. Either that or he's playing along very well. But either way, uh, John took him on a tour of his uh, winery while we proceeded to investigate his house. We found that there were some papers um, that were basically trying to get funding from, uh, from his benefactors and they to try to uh, enlist and support Andrick and to you know, further explore this potential and it did also um, speak towards the the effect that it seemed to have on people as well so he was definitely interested although he wasn't directly connected yet uh, he was more like uh, trying to get connected with that group um, let's see from there John I'm gonna kick it over to you because I'm starting to <laughs> that's, that's the extent of my of my recollection uh, well, from there, we just returned to the Saj estate because that was pretty much the last thing we did last okay. time. But the thing he did tell us um, when we were when I was talking with him around the winery was that um, a guy named Doral Sire uh, runs a glass blowing shop, and he is in his name had come up several times before in the investigation. Um, and we know that he uh, supplies Andrick with some of his um, glassware for use in his projects. Um, and then the other lead that we had was to go back in question Tiega at the Saja State as well. And so those were the two leads I still had on my notes. Yeah, yeah I forgot was, about uh, the glass bar. Yeah, that was good. That, that was pretty much a, you know, it's it's just like what the uh, Azik told you. You know, he was shilling out all of this money you know, to Andrick, you know, buying him all these uh, supplies and paints and anything that he needed he was just dishing it out and that's exactly what uh, uh, Jarena had said back at the uh, at the, the gallery so yeah this guy uh, Doral you got the location to his his shop which is that of you know working on glass and you know it's sort of like a uh, like a glass bobble shop and that's where we're gonna pick up you guys uh, you guys uh, really have already pretty much taken care of everything. Uh, as for Tiega, uh, really, the only thing that you guys need to do is worry about the glass blower bobbles now. Well, you know, Doral Sire. Uh, Tiega's pretty much uh, checked out. So you guys are here with uh, all of the, the members are here. Fulton Goss is here, you know. Uh, He's the you know the wife's the the victim his uh, he's the husband, uh, 
Now, his wife is still in pretty bad shape, although she is recovering. She's uh, she's definitely had some magical healing done, and she's in much better shape than when you guys left the Wink and Wave Tavern, and she was, you know, basically knocking on uh, knocking on death's door. Uh, also, Erdin is there, Brizik. Uh, he and and uh, Faltine Goss are, are basically keeping the peace now. And you guys, you you, you know, they're both wanting to try to find you know Kata Brick as a, you know somehow influenced by magic and wants to get her name cleared. And and that was one of the bonus EXP rewards that you got last week was uh, basically stalling the guards. Uh, and giving Kata more time before she's basically just scarfed up and, and executed it, you know, in a couple days. So, now as for Andrick, you still haven't seen him. Uh, actually, nobody's seen him. But you have the location to uh, this mysterious Doral Cyril. You have the location to his establishment. And one other piece that I forgot to mention, too, is that one of the plans that we found in... Um, and the wizard's uh, house was was basically plans of a rebellion in the Gent, in the Zent ghetto as well, and it referred uh, to something called Resendel's sword, which we don't know what that is yet. Yep, that was uh, that was some of the uh, the great information that you had <laughs> you had found as as uh, Atticus was taking the the tour of the Martha's Vineyard around his house. That was uh, that was good. All right, so what do you guys want to do? Because uh, you guys are at the Saja Estate. I'm gonna give you guys a a map. Here's a you know the map of Mallmaster. Now, you guys are are here uh, at pretty much at location 20, where you guys are usually always uh, always starting. And uh, yeah, there you go. You know that uh, the glassblower bobble shop is on the outskirts of town, and and, and exactly it's. It's on the outskirts of the wall of Mallmaster itself, and it's it's basically on a strip of land on the harbor. And I'll move a an arrow down here for you guys to show you where, right here, this is where the glassblower's bobble shop is going to be, or the location of, hopefully, where Doral uh, Sire is. I'm sorry, Dave, uh, I think you cut out briefly for us there. Hello. In that last little bit. Check, check, check. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you now. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, like I was explaining, this there's a small strip of land outside of uh, Mullmaster, okay. and this is where Sire's Glass Blower's Bobble Shop is located, and it it's where the arrow is on the left hand side of the map, and it, you know, like I said, it's it's right on, right on the Moon Sea. Looks close. Let's hit him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's go there before any more buildings burn down or before the uh, rebellion takes hold. And well, we get it. between Gilden and Graven, we should be able to burn down something. Yeah. <laughs> That's profiling. Profiling <laughs> is wrong. Hey, Tell you me. don't have any more hair to Only burn, so it's probably safe now. It's growing back in. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a five o'clock beard, five o'clock shadow right. beard, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have put a lot more uh, resist fire flask and a lot more uh, alchemist fire flask in the game, just for just for Graven. Mm -hmm. ah, what, what fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going I'm to the last blowing shop. It's right on the water. He's got a hot fire. Yes, you know what they say about opening a shop, do you? It's location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, right on the wire. It is a pretty cold night as you guys are, you know, uh, traveling. Oh, I see, uh, Doug, you got disconnected. Uh, you guys are traveling to the glassblower's, you know, shop. It is pretty, pretty much a. It's, it's a cold night. It's actually shockingly cold, and you know the cold is actually. You know, making your uh, you know, making your throats get dry and whatnot as the wind is whipping around, and as every as you guys leave the the safety of you know Mole Master and you start to proceed down this this small road and this this small strip of uh, land that's on the Moon Sea, 
you can start to see that there is smoke arising from this small cluster of buildings. Smoke and, on the water. Yeah, there's there's about Wait. there's a couple of buildings beside one another. And on the map you can you know you can see that uh, Doral Sires, Sires Glass working shop is pretty much in the middle of these. Now I'm going to give you guys a uh, another map as you guys approach Doral Sires Glass working shop. And as you start to get closer, you can start to see flames jutting up from the roof and out of the windows and it's not like it's a rampaging fire that is just decimating everything but th this is a pretty good fire there's you know small puddles of lava on the ground you know catching things on fire catching the shrubberies on fire and it is actually and, and it's it's a cold night but now it's really warm where you guys are at and you know there's a like a, a cement wall that's uh, you know surrounds this building and this is where Doral Sire's shop is because you can see the sign out there. Hmm. So, Someone beat us here. Yeah. So you guys are approaching you uh, can go ahead and move your tokens on the map. There's a there's quite a bit of smoke coming from the the eastern side of of the building. And you can hear a uh, oh, 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 like a like a chanting going on. Is it from inside or outside? No, it, no, it definitely wouldn't be from inside. Whoever, whoever would be inside would be having a bad night right now because <laughs> the sun is, you know, the sun is starting to, uh, to lower. Okay, what what direction is the chanting coming from? Uh, it sounds like it's coming from the, from the east as you as you approach. Okay. You're kind of echo, echoing around the, the several build, buildings that uh, are there. From the east side of that house? Yeah. Doug, you having a problem getting back in, or...? Um... Did I drop? It looks like I'm still connected. Yeah. I just don't see the map. Yeah, it says you dropped. Uh, it, hadn't, it hadn't notified me of that yet. Let me, let me hop out and back in. Okay. So as you yeah, guys you are... Also, uh, Go ahead, James. Gra Graven's token's not on there. You got Travic on there mm. instead. Yes, I, I see that. Here we go. There's Atticus. That's right. I know we all look alike. All you dwarves, <laughs> you look the same. <laughs> That's not true anymore. Graven doesn't have any beard or hair. That's right. I best for a halfling. <laughs> a stout one. A really <laughs> stout one. <laughs> but I guess I'm the lead, lead of the group. Uh, can I uh, examine this uh, lava sparkly stuff on the ground over here? Sure. You most certainly can. I bet that's hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it's bet it hurts. It burns. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I probably need to roll burns. something, right? <laughs> you can give me a... Uh, I, I would say give me a nature check. Nature. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be horrible. Yeah, it, it just looks like some kind of like molting, melting, uh, smoldering lava to you. Nice roll with the wind. Yep, it's hot. <laughs> you, can, you can feel heat, Curlioa. <laughs> yeah. I, I touch it. Ow, that hurts. Yep, it's hot. So Graven's going to go to the front door of the house. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of heat coming off of the store, and there are several windows, Graven. And, and there's actually, it looks like you can actually see the glass kind of flexing in and out as it looks like these windows could probably blow at any time. All right, so I'm going to obviously do the smart thing, and I'm going to take my hammer and pound the door in. Okay. <laughs> to try and relieve the pressure from the windows. Sure. Let's okay. the fire. You do that, you, you hit the door. I've seen you, backdraft. A burst of fire comes out. You'll Raven hasn't seen backdraft. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to. 
<laughs> You're gonna take a little bit of fire damage, which will be a three fire damage as the as you open up the door and it explodes back on you. You're gonna take three fire damage, so I'll go. Oh, it gets hot in here. Yeah. Well, that took care of the beard. <laughs> yeah, whatever, yes. whatever beard, whatever stubble that was just now starting to grow back is now gone once again. That's right. Now I'm looking like a like, like an elf fairy princess. Oh, that smell again. <laughs> But now it looks like the the fire. Now that it actually has some air, it looks like it's actually starting to uh, get a little bit of wor get a little bit worse inside, and you can see you know <laughs> flames coming you know out of the top of the roof and whatnot. And mm. welcome back, welcome back, Doug. And this is uh, what you see in Allah. Okay, I already see that you uh, I got are the viewing now. the map. So, but this is what you guys see. And over to the right, it seems like the smoke is thicker on the outside. And this is kind of probably where you think this chanting uh, is coming from. And it, from and it the seems outside? like it's not, yeah, from the outside, absolutely, yeah. Like over by the, to our, to our right there, or? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's where it seems like it's coming from, yeah. You can the hear, big uh, uh, fire pit is, it looks like. All right, I so I'm going to head that direction. Yeah, the fire pit yeah. that you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've ensured the, 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 <laughs> the destruction of this house, I'm gonna fall along <laughs> the edge of the wall. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over there and stealth. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you stealth, and I'm gonna walk over there. <laughs> Does Curlio <laughs> have another uh, useful spell like just to wind up his sleeve? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. All right, so I just have the fog cloud. Graven, as as you start to turn the corner, yeah, all of a sudden. You start to see, and you, well, you hear all of this this worshiping going on, and you see that these worshippers are wrapped in very heavy cloaks. I mean, it, it it is a it is a cool night outside. You know, they have their robes pulled over their heads and whatnot, and they're all chanting in unison. Now, there's over a dozen other individuals here uh, that are also. You can see that they're throwing what what appears to be torches or lit sticks into this huge bonfire that's probably about forty feet tall. I mean, this is just it's massive. And like I said, there's like a dozen men in a small area, men and women, and then you can distinctively see what appears to be four cultists that are pitching things into the fire as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you know. They're all chanting in unison, and they're all saying the same thing. You know, they're talking about, uh, they're, they're mentioning the, the cult of eternal flame, and may this last forever, and we will reign for a hundred years, and et cetera, and et cetera. And I want everybody that's in view of this, give me a, uh, give me a perception check. So that would be Graven and Atticus. So you two, please give me a, uh, a check. Oh, very nice. Atticus is so clutch, man. I don't think Atticus has had but like one bad roll. Perception tip on the skills tab. There you go. And wow, even great. <laughs> nice job. So as both of you are kind of Beard's not in the way. around the corner, peeking around, and you see all this going on, you can see that several of these cultists take these glowing red bulbs, probably about probably about twice the size of a soccer ball and you see them take these what appear to be glowing red balls and they throw them into the fire as well now Great. Balls nobody, fire. nobody even notices that you're here I've, I've already rolled a, uh, a, a you know your stealth check nobody even knows that you're well perception check on my end and you guys are good so you hmm. hear this uh you know, and I will tell you this. The individuals, they're all dressed in these black cloaks with red, uh, you know, sort of like flames on them. Uh, and everything is trimmed with like a red uh, silk. Now, all of the other individuals around, they're just normal. You know, they just look like normal commoners and whatnot. So what would you guys like to do? And I'm going to, uh, I, I lock the tokens up. So I'm going to go from, from left to right. So, uh, Curlio, what would you like to do? Uh, I just want to move up to uh, where I hear the chanting coming from. Okay, go ahead and uh, do that, and I'll approve the move. How about uh, Gildan? What about you? 
So how tall is the wall on the outside of the uh, compound? It's not very tall. It's uh, probably mm -hmm. about up to your mid-chest. Okay, so, so I'm going to stay... You, it would definitely give you some cover, that's for sure. If you were going to hide behind it, you would yep. definitely receive cover. Uh, I guess I'll go to here, and can I see from, from that corner where I am? Sure, yeah, you can, yep. yep. All right, yeah, I'm going to pull my bow out as well and have my bow ready. Okay, sounds good. What about, uh, what about Atticus? You see all this and these orbs being thrown into the, the fire, and, you know, and you see these, see these orbs, Atticus, they hit the fire, they, you know, sparks come up out of the out of the flame and you know that seems like the flame kind of intensifies a little bit and raises up to about the 50 foot mark and then kind of settles back down but these things look like they're kind of moving as well as like maybe something inside is constricting and it looks like these eggs are getting larger as well or these orbs so Atticus um yeah this doesn't really look like a um Ability to negotiate. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw my crossbow and just cover behind Graven because um, I figure he's going to start the festivities pretty shortly. <laughs> I, I, that's why we're saving Graven for last. So. <laughs> you know it. Right. Hey! Right. <laughs> what, what, Is it because I'm, like I'm laughing? Is it because we, know, we know you well. <laughs> so Graven uh, <laughs> uh, is going to walk. One, two, yeah, to there, and uh, he will uh, uh, go there, and he kind of looks around the fire at all the chanters. Yeah, and he's like, all the chanters are all—they're all entranced. It's like they're really into what they're doing, Graven, and they don't even a, really notice you there. <laughs> I kind of have my shield up. My my my. I kind of—I mean, I might my hammer yeah. there, and I kind of push the guy next to me. Hey, it's a cold night, isn't it? I put one hand out of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as you do that, bring a flask. <laughs> <laughs> this cultist, all he does is he 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 kind of like shakes his head and he and he looks over towards you and he and he looks back and then <laughs> he does a double take, <laughs> looks back over at you again and says. Piss off, will ya? Don't you see that we're busy right now? Piss off, don't you see that we're busy right now? You don't want right. to mess with us, pal. Get out of here. So, Go so, join the crowd. So, so, so Graven swats him in the mouth with his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll nice. initiative. Oh, that was rude. <laughs> <laughs> roll initiative. I like that. Ro roll initiative. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oi, piss off, mate. Don't you see we're kind of busy around here? Well, that was rude. Obviously, they missed a chance to recruit a fellow fire lover. I'm just That's saying. True. It's true. He, he could have given me his whole spiel, right? I would have listened to the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. <sighs> oh, this is too good. I love it. I love it. You just, I just go right up and think, <laughs> it's a cold night out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Graven, you've got top initiative. You are up first, so man, you were, right, you so were like you're I said, totally ready for it. You swat him upside the mouth. Let's. I uh, said I swat him in the mouth with my. <laughs> that, my that, hammer that has to get like, advantage, that was right? Rude. And I, uh, yeah, I kind of grab it with both hands and. Boop. That's a uh, a fourteen. Let's see. Remember next time to to target that guy. Oh, sorry. That's no problem. God. Uh, but it is a hit, though. Uh, 14 is a hit. And, in fact, remember, you can take that total and drop it on that uh, cultist. So I'll drop it on there for you. And it says it is a hit. Ooh. Then I will... All right. Very nice. Five you points of damage. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> five bludgeoning <laughs> damage as your Warhammer meets his jaw and just breaks it. And you can hear the bones cracking. And all of a sudden, it just breaks the trance of all of the other the other cultists, and and one in particular, he puts his robe down and he says, "If you mess with the cult of the Eternal Flame, you will die and be all part right. of this. You will be part sure. of the fire." 
Uh, <laughs> Alright, I've done this before. <laughs> Survived it then, I can survive it now. <laughs> Alright, so Gildan, what say you, Gildan? 